What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Oh, welcome if this is your first time here. If you like videos about prepping, survival, stuff for life, and other related topics, then be sure to subscribe and turn notifications on me and notify the time that I upload a brand new video. We had some severe storms here yesterday. Not so much right here where I am. I had some heavy wind and some heavy rains, but a little bit further south, about maybe 15 or 20 miles south, they had some tornadoes, two tornadoes. If, if what I've heard is correct, they had two different tornadoes that touched down in the county below me and had a lot of damage down there. So pray for those folks because the town is small and they suffered a lot of destruction down there. Destruction to a church, a funeral home, several businesses and homes. And I saw some photographs online where some of those will probably have to be completely taken down because the damage is so extensive. So prayers are appreciated for everyone affected by these tornadoes we had here yesterday. We have more wind right now, and it's supposed to have more rain, but luckily no more tornado warnings. I know my phone went off with the weather alert two different times yesterday because tornadoes are right in this area. But luckily, they didn't hit touchdown, you know, right here where I am. And thankfully, this house has a basement. And I also have inside the basement a root cellar that doubles as a storm shelter. And it has actually double thick concrete walls, about that thick all the way around to actually double it up even more. So it's bulletproof and pretty much storm proof now if a tornado hit the house it could take the roof off the house can make a huge mess with everything outside and cause a lot of damage but that room that's built inside this basement that's surrounded by dirt on two different sides anyways and has double concreted walls would withstand a pretty good storm in my opinion hopefully but anyways guys take a look at some articles here i have several to talk about and this first one here is some really good news if you're vladimir Zelensky, Zelensky acquires high grove house former residence of king charles you can see here is a photograph of this mansion and he that Zelensky went and bought using taxpayer dollars and sold weapons in the black market more than likely or no doubt in my opinion and pocketing the cash making his bank account grow and here he is buying mansions and i heard he's bought several different mansions i've read i mean that he's bought several different mansions he's bought a couple of big yachts so when this war is over and ukraine is completely demolished and destroyed it, Zelensky will be living here not even in ukraine more than likely he will escape out of ukraine just like a lot of the high-ranking Nazis did in World War II from Germany and Berlin. They escaped to Argentina. And you can see here Zelensky is already getting himself set up to leave Ukraine and live high on the hogs, we say, around these parts. Beautiful mansion. Zelensky buys a new mansion for $20 million in London as part of his ongoing mansion equation program from the generosity of Americans, and that is definitely what it is. If he so, if he was so, uh, he's always demanding more funds, more funding, more money. Got to stay with Ukraine. However, he can go spend twenty million dollars on a mansion and buy yachts and things. Why isn't he taking that money, that twenty million dollars he spent here on this mansion, for example, and puts it into Ukraine, puts it into funding for the military to fight off those evil Russians? Why hasn't? Why hasn't he did that? Because he's acquiring mansions. He's acquiring property outside of Ukraine. He's acquiring multi-million dollar yachts because he's going to live it up after this is over with. He's going to be living high on the hog and never have to work a day in his life to worry about money again. All courtesy of our federal government. This here looks kind of funny for some reason here. Olena Zelensky and Queen Consort Carmenilla, I think that's what's pronounced. But you can see here, I mean, what's going on here anyway? The woman's hand is on this other woman's ass. I would say this is Zelensky's wife here because this woman, she might be older from behind. So, hmm. Interesting. What's going on there, you think? And there is Zelensky and 
King Charles shaking hands on a $20 million deal. Anyway, at least little Vladimir Zelensky is going to be happy. No matter when Americans are here starving to death, Zelensky is going to be happy. When we are broke, economy collapsed, hyperinflated dollar, the border completely wide open with millions coming in fighting over resources here in the United States, Zelensky will be living here with servants. This is from the Daily Express, U.S. Taiwan earthquake, global economy faces major catastrophe as chip industry under threat. The global economy is at risk of major catastrophe as Taiwan's earthquake vulnerability threatens to bring the world semiconductor industry to a halt. Taiwan was struck by a major earthquake on Wednesday, reaching 7.2 and 7.7 on the Richter scale. The country is known both as a hotspot for earthquakes, but also as the world's biggest player in the semiconductor industry. You know, those microchips and semiconductors they make over there. Taiwan produces over 60% of the world's semiconductors and over 90% of the most advanced models. Its chip industry is central to the global economy. So the vast, vast, vast majority of the microchips we use in pretty much everything in electronic devices, smartphones, and cars, and pretty much everything nowadays comes from Taiwan. That's why there's so much interest in Taiwan from China and the United States because the world's economy hinges on what happens in Taiwan. And according to this article, they are subject to a lot of earthquakes in Taiwan that could damage these factories and these facilities and put the chip manufacturing completely to bring it to a halt. And that wouldn't be good for the world economy or anyone, for that matter, because they can't easily pick that back up and build those back up. And if it shut down, you know, a major earthquake damaged those facilities where they couldn't get it back up and running in several months or maybe a year or even more. I mean, that would be a major catastrophe for the world's economies. Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing has paused production and evacuated staff at some of its facilities after the earthquake. The company reports, reports that all of the systems are working normally. So according to this report here, they had a major earthquake in Taiwan, and it damaged a little bit of their facilities, but nothing major according to what they are reporting. They evacuated the staff, and they sent people in to look at it and see if everything is in working order and safe, apparently, and they're saying that everything is working normally now. So who knows what could happen in the future, though. You can see here this building just toppled over to sideways. When you have so much of your manufacturing of a key product in one location that could be damaged through many different things, you know, a tsunami could come through, earthquakes, you could have war between, you know, China and Taiwan. So many things could happen to cut those off. And you center at that in one place and don't try to spread that out anywhere. It doesn't make any sense to me. You would think that these other countries, like the United States, who's totally, totally reliant on these microchips and semiconductors from Taiwan, would be working diligently over the years here to get their own facilities going to make those here in the United States. For the United States, we export war export currency, and import everything else, including things like this that is key to our economy and keeping up our standard of living here in the United States. It is crazy. It's just like most of our prescription medications comes from China and India, I think that it is. But I know China for sure, and I think India also. Why don't we make our own medicine here, our own antibiotics? Here in the United States, but instead, the vast majority are made in China, are made somewhere else and shipped over here, and then sold to the American people for a premium amount to increase the profits. That's what it, that's all it is: is decrease, increase the profits. They don't care about anyone besides the profit. Yahoo Finance: Bird flu spooks meat milk traders as virus hits dairy cows. A virus that has killed millions of birds is spreading among U.S. dairy cows, raising concerns that the outbreak may hurt demand for dairy and beef. Now, read this again. This is from Yahoo Finance. You can see it says right here, Bloomberg, they used to reprint an article. They put it on Yahoo Finance, though. But it originally came from Bloomberg. 
a virus that has killed millions of birds is spreading among U.S. dairy cows. Now, from my understanding, the actual virus hasn't killed millions of birds. They go in, they do a PCR test on some of the birds, and if one shows up to have the bird flu, the avian flu, they kill all of them in the facility. And that's how they get this number with millions killed. But they act like a virus that killed, that has killed millions of birds. So they act like it was bird flu that killed these birds. But they go in, from my understanding, and they test a few. And if one tests positive with the PCR test, then they killed the whole crop, or the whole flock, I mean. Crazy? That's how they get these numbers. However, when they write this up, a virus that has killed millions because they want to make it look like it's the virus instead of them slaughtering, you know, these birds, these chickens. And that's how they write the news. That's how they affect people's minds to get you to think certain things and believe certain ways when it really isn't the case. And if you look into it and think about it logically for five seconds, you would see that's not the case. So the actual virus hasn't killed millions of birds in the United States. They test a few, and if it's a couple, or even one, I'm don't, not sure how many, probably one, test positive, then they kill them all. And then they say it was the virus that killed them. Sounds kind of familiar, doesn't it, guys? The bird flu has been confirmed in dairy cows across several states, with the USDA saying Monday it has been found in New Mexico and five additional herds in Texas. The virus has been infected. The virus has even infected a person in Texas while the biggest U.S. egg producer out of the plant after the virus was found in the facility. So, the gist of this is beef prices are going to go up more than likely. Poultry prices are going to go up more than likely. And egg prices are going to go up more than likely because of this. And guys, here's another article about this. Largest fresh egg producer in U.S. finds bird flu in chickens at Texas and Michigan plants. Right there is, a, is the, if you look up genius in the dictionary, right there you'll be, John Fetterman. It'll be his picture. Him and, it'll be a close run, it'll be a close tie between him and Joe Biden. But he's probably smarter than Joe Biden on this, more intelligent than Joe Biden, I would say. The largest producer of fresh eggs in the U.S. said Tuesday it had temporarily halted production at a Texas plant after bird flu was found in chickens. An official said the virus had also been detected at a poultry facility in Michigan. In Texas, Ridgeland, Mississippi-based Cal Main Foods and Company, Inc., said in a statement that approximately 1.6 million laying hens and 337 thousand pullets about 3.6 of the total flop were destroyed after the infection see where destroyed they didn't test 1.6 million laying hens they didn't test 337 thousand pullets they tested a few and then they destroyed the whole herd as i said a minute ago or the whole flock then they say bird flu killed so many million birds in the united states and whatever year it was or whatever month it was. That's how they add the numbers up to make everyone think, wow, this is something major. This bird flu is just killing all these chickens. They're just falling over dead. When that simply isn't the case, they're being tested a few are and they're being slaughtered. And it all affects the food supply. It's like all the food processing plants we had that were being attacked and were mysteriously burning down, blowing up and things. I think it's like 122 the last time I checked. All affecting the food supply. It seems like there is a war going on against the food supply here in the United States. But I could be totally wrong. It could be, all be coincidence. Dairy cows in Texas and Kansas were reported to be infected with bird flu last week and federal agricultural officials Later confirmed infections in Michigan, dairy herd that had recently received cows from Texas. And guys, another article from Yahoo Finance, originally published from Bloomberg. A million simulations and one verdict for U.S. economy. Debt danger ahead. 
The Congressional Budget Office warned in its latest projections that U.S. federal government debt is on a path from 97% of gross domestic product, or GDP, last year, which is what it was last year, 100% of gross domestic product last year, to 116% by 2034, even higher than in World War II. The actual outlook is likely worse. The outlook is economic collapse, hyperinflation, First, and then total economic collapse, in my opinion. We know it's coming. Get prepared for it. The writing's on the wall. I and mean, everything, every indicator, every indicator guarantees United States currency collapse, economic collapse. It's going to be worse than the Great Depression of the 1930s. I mean, it is going to be absolutely devastating, in my opinion. And if they're saying now, you know, that's 97% last year, you know those official numbers are actually much higher because they lie with statistics. They manipulate these numbers to make it look better than what it is, even though this is horrible right here, 97% last year of the gross domestic product, meaning we have more debt than the country's worth and the output is actually worth here in the country. So you know if you're saying 97%, it's probably 150% last year and growing more and more by 2034, the economy's going to be completely collapsed, in my opinion. I mean, every indicator points to that inevitability. It is going to be absolutely horrendous. This other arc over here from Zero Hedge by Tyler Durbin. Gold closes at record high for fifth straight day. Gold dumps as bond bloodbath stalls. And I'm not going to read all this, all these graphs and things. You can look at this yourself. It's over on Zero Hedge. But people don't understand that it's not the value of gold going up. It's actually the value of the dollar going down. Gold is holding steady where it normally always is. But we have the dollar getting worth less and less. So it's taking more and more dollars to buy you know, an ounce of gold. So it looks like gold is going up in value, but it's really not. It's just retaining its value. Anyway, if you liked the video, give it a big thumbs up. Thanks for watching. I'm the Creek Warm Mac, and I'll see you all in the next video. Hopefully.